All right, today we're gonna to hit the Brandscape and your playbook for diving into activewear and athleisure. The big brands in the space, and are you buying them because of their products, or are you buying them because of their brands? All the niche brands, and then what they're doing to stand out, and the ones you shouldn't touch at all. And then if you wanna make your own activewear or athleisure, I'm gonna break down three factories, low MOQ stuff, good solid factories, and a luxury provider, and what I like about each and why you'd use them. And then I'm gonna hit my thoughts on what I call the new activewear, the new athleisure that I think is gonna come after this. So, let's dive in. All right, so I'm gonna kick off by talking about one of my favorite wholesale Blanks companies. This is Made Blanks. And you'll see why I'm talking about them in a second. So, Blanks companies are great if you have a brand because you can buy wholesale from someone who carries stock domestic. So, Made has this all in LA ready to ship. Obviously, a bunch is sold out. Why I like them is they have individually like unique SKUs. So, I don't just buy like a black hoodie or whatever. I can go get something like particularly interesting. They have great washes. Prices are a little higher than a lot of the Blank companies, but obviously, you can see the washes are crazy. The looks are interesting. So if you actually want to make something for your brand, make 50 of a thing or 100 of a thing, uh, and have it be not like some generic, like I'm doing it on Gildan or Shaka or stuff that like everybody has, uh, then doing it on Made is a cool option. I want to bring them up because of this product. So this is a thermal. Um, now we're working on a valuable thermal that maybe I'll be able to grab and pop a photo in, in here, but maybe not. But this is, uh, look at this snakeskin thermal. So I'm bringing this up because this is where I think athleisure and activewear is headed, right? There's already so many good activewear companies, so much good athleisure, but a lot of them are falling into the same style. All the core aesthetics are covered. And we're gonna hit that later on. We'll talk about 24 seven, uh, ASRV and District Vision and Kill Crew and like all the folks that represent different aesthetics. But this like materials look where, I mean, this is still 100% cotton, but like has this very interesting look. I think there is a whole cottage industry headed towards there. Another crazy one, which is kind of unrelated, but I just have to show is this is waxed cotton. I think it's like a brushed, brushed wax. And they call it Louis Duffel because it looks like leather. Uh, like, look at this on the on the jacket and on the pants and how that looks like leather, but really is just purely like a sweatsuit brushed with wax. Uh, I'd gotten some jeans like this from, from PDF before. They were like a waxed denim. You can see some of the PDF looks, but then seeing it like on a sweatsuit, this is another one where I see like everyone's got their basics, right? Like you can go and get, you can cop any color range you want, any fit and style and weight you want from any of a hundred brands that are doing just like, hey, I'm gonna give you this weight of Terry with this color of look. Elwood just dropped drop new colors for this, right? Cool, like, yeah, all right, cool. They're saying, all right, gray, blue, pink, that's what we're rolling with, this particular weight, this particular cut. There's gonna be 100 options you have like that. But to stand out next, or you wanna make a brand that does something better, this made stuff is a really interesting example of just like, all right, I'm gonna take the time and intention to get a material and have it be really interesting. Uh, and this one in particular, I thought was fascinating. All right, but next, let's talk about the brandscape, the existing brand landscape of athletic wear and athleisure and what brands are worth it and not. So Aloe is obviously dominating in any number of ways. They are inescapable in Orange County where I am. And they've really centered around brand, right? Uh, they came subsequent to Lululemon basically establishing themselves as a product company. And actually maybe wise to talk about Lululemon first. So Lulu really built this athleisure men's and women's category, making wearable stuff during the day, using athletic materials, being able to transition between athletic and style without any problem. Grown to a massive company, established themselves in any number of ways. They started as a company where you were buying the product. People recommend recommended the Lululemon product to me is why I got it. Like other guys who had my same build. And what do I mean by buying a product or buying a brand? Something I bring up a lot inside my social media. So sometimes you buy a brand because the product is perfect for you or it's great and you're getting it because it appeals. Sometimes you're buying it because of the brand name, because it exists. And that's a totally fine reason to buy a brand. But then there can be a growing dissonance between I could just get the same thing at a lower price or a better thing than what I'm buying there, but I'm not buying that same brand name. I think that's a concept that as consumers and as brand builders, we should think about a lot. And so Lulu basically became they're buying because of the product, then it was they're buying because of the brand, it was ubiquitous and it was cool. Now it's kind of back to if you buy it still, it's less because you're flashing on the Lululemon brand name, more because you still want that quality of their products. And they've been usurped, at least around me, uh, men and women by Aloe. And what I thought Aloe's done interesting for their brands, they've gone beyond just the clothes that they have. So you pop on the Aloe Instagram, super yoga focused, um, not as poppin' as like the Lulu Instagram, not as interesting. Don't think they're doing a super great job here. It does not matter. Then you pop over into Aloe Wellness and you begin to see the fact that they're entering into all these additional categories, right? They're building themselves into a brand where Aloe is the brand itself. It's not about the athleisure. It's not about the gear. It's about the Aloe lifestyle. And that's permeating through the product offerings that they have. And this is super important for people to want to create brands in that space or to, as a consumer to look at what you're buying into when you buy something. You're buying a pair of Lulu gear because you specifically now want whatever look or whatever functionality that it has. 
brand isn't as cool as it was and they're not branching out into many of these other categories they did some stuff with like mirror etc not as relevant but aloe you're really buying into the aloe as a lifestyle the other people that wear aloe the wellness concept and idea and it's like overall kind of chic active wear nature and if you're a creator building an active wear brand we're talking about factories and stuff like that later then thinking about okay i'm going to start with this clothing but clothing in this space is completely commodified like i mentioned everyone has your basic sweat sets you can really dial down and get materials and cool things now we'll talk about voari and how they've stood out in a minute uh but like you are going to make the same things as many other people but the good part is your fans are buying this, right? People are, consumers are buying athletic wear, active wear, gear, and they're buying it continually. You upgrade it, you add new stuff. People are getting more into running and these activities every day. But that should just be a starting point. That's a kind of a given. You can buy into that, but you're not gonna be, probably not gonna be able to scale because so many of these niches are already covered. But you can go sideways. You can say, okay, how can I put this into a different segment? Like how can I then grow into wellness or drinks? And we'll talk about Represent in a minute who have basically done just that and see where it goes. This is where Voari becomes interesting because you look at, uh, you, if, you, if you live in Southern California, you are inundated with Voari. They stood out by really getting into materials. They have like these dream knits and these really specific items that they sell that while looking extremely similar to Lulu and Aloe, maybe standing out a bit based on their like socal color themes, is really based on materials. And when we talk about product versus brand, like Voari doesn't quite have a brand. They don't seem to stand for much, but that said, they have a California aesthetic. Everything just has this Southern California looking feel as corny and stock photo as it is. Everything about what they are doing is like selling this California lifestyle aesthetic. Everything is beachside. Everything is involved in like that activity. We got singing bowls on Maine. Like they are saying, okay, their brand is just simply associating with a regional lifestyle that is um, super aspirational. And a bunch of their consumers live and feel natural about. But that's an interesting way to hop into a new category. They came seemingly out of nowhere. But you have big established players. And you can look at Nike and think about how much Nike used to own of the active wear share and how little it is now. Uh, I mean, obviously still massive, but like how many of these people have just taken huge chunks of their share? And you say, Voari said, we're going to focus really nice on materials. We're going to make things that feel good and that perform well and that are different than other people's materials. And then we're going to associate it with a lifestyle that is extremely universally appealing. That was a way for a big brand to stand out. But before we get into niche brands, and the ones I like and how they stand out, we're going to talk a bit more about what these bigger brands could be doing. Because now we're in this big competitive space where you have your existing big activewear sports companies, your Nikes, your Adidas, your Puma, etc. And then you have all these companies that have, are like the new wave of that that are getting pretty large and you know, billions of dollars. Then you have all these niche companies that are chipping away at everyone's market share by just zoning in on really particular communities. But what these big companies are doing and what all these companies should be thinking like is, is they have such generic social media, such generic content. One thing I like that Puma had done is this Puma Kids Super Collab. And Puma's always been very collab heavy. They're not as resonant as a brand as I feel those other ones are, similar to Reebok, like relegated to this, this level down. But that doesn't mean they don't do interesting things and obviously collaborating with Kids Super almost everything was going to be interesting but they did this lookbook this like mafia inspired lookbook and the art direction of that is all throughout this site and like love it quirky fun shows off the clothes super well uh, again we're not talking quite athleisure here in the same way but this is I'm using this to punctuate the point of like what creative direction does here and Adidas is another example, and then I'll tie it all together. So one, one thing Adidas did, and Adidas is on their, their great comeback, right? Like, obviously, it was in a complicated place post-Kanye. Samba became the sneaker of a major chunk of our time. They really leaned into it with, like, the Wales Bonner offshoots. Um, and it's funny, I'd done a video right when they had kind of lost Kanye, and I was like, the things that could bring Adidas into the forefront is A, they need to make the Samba the shoe, period, which is they did exactly the right thing. They need to up their collab ratio. And it's funny that the Wales Bonner ones ended up being like the ones that really took things places uh, of all the ones. I wouldn't have predicted that. And they need to nail the Jerry Lorenzo uh, collab, like actually get him to do something solid in basketball and whatnot. And they didn't end up doing that. And that still is not something useful. But what they have done is nailed the Samba. Instead of running into basketball with Jerry Lorenzo, they just did it with what they've done with Anthony. So Ant from the Timberwolves and his shoe has created the whole movement. They basically got the right player at the right time and actually gave him a good design as opposed to like the things they've done for Harden. I don't know if he would have sold hell of shoes anyway. Although shout out to the Reebok AIs I had back in the day that we bought purely because it was AI. Maybe Harden would have had that crossover. But now they're beginning to run the playbook as if they're a leaner brand. So we've had Jersey Renaissance, right? That we've been continually seeing where all these brands, like Bravest did a bunch of them. Obviously Kid Super, I think has done a bunch where people are just making soccer jerseys and like they have their own boutique teams. And then you have brands like Front Office that are making up whole fictional teams. Uh, and then you have all these like smaller clubs like uh, Venezia, which I know I'm, I'm butchering, and who have like noted art direction and quality. But Adidas has now done this lineup with 
a ton of their, uh, I think they chose 16 collaborators who all have different stores, retail stores, and are producing these jerseys. And you can like vote on these jerseys inside the app, etc. But they've gone and made like unique styles developed with individual partners and did it at scale, like 16 of them. And I'm sure there'll be content ideally for each of these with each of these retailers. And like, this is what you can do when you're a large brand. And I harped on this in a Instagram video I did about uh, Reebok, where I was just like, uh, it was about big brands in general, but I zoned in on Reebok because it's like, you have this huge back catalog of stuff that you can show on social media. And you have all these things that are being released and you're posting like once a day, maybe. And you have like sub accounts with small amounts of followers. And like, this is a great example from Adidas of like, this is 16 products. They have 16 individual stories, all done in collaboration that all have interesting design, that all can get content built around them in waves and that all can be part of influencer campaigns regionally. And thinking like that, thinking about like 16 regions, 16 sets of influencers, 16 stories, and then how that can permeate a brand at that scale through the culture. And the fact that like, this is just one campaign in soccer with all the different sports and things you have. These are not like massive budget things to execute. It's just about the scale with which you are engaging in the cultural conversation. And for these brands, so these legacy brands, like Adidas is doing a great job. I think Nike is struggling, but they're like masterful storytellers and have masterful talent in there. So I think they'll they'll find their way to do whatever they need to do. Puma continues to do more and more interesting things. That's a product thing. I think they're getting closer and closer to where they can jump out of the tier they're relegated to. Reebok doing a lot of these collabs and stuff with the storytelling and the actual product still needs work. But even now, Lulu, Aloe, etc., beginning to think about interesting content. Wari, how can you do collaborations and engagements and interesting design at scale to be more than selling based on like your nits and your looks and your feels? Because these niche brands are all coming for them. Which brings me to niche brands and why each of them stand out. So first is 24-7 by represent. 24-7 by represent stands out because of represent and George Heaton. So if you go scroll through this, like they're making nice stuff. They're making it at a pretty high price. They've always made a good, like it's a, it's a very, very solid brand. Everything fits well, everything performs well. It is just cool and unique enough without being too much, very mainstream applicable for guys of all kinds. Easy to wear, easy to mix and match. You can turn represent into a uniform. But this brand works because the founder absolutely ruthlessly lives this. Guys on the front of UK men's health, him and the noted CrossFit athletes and High Rocks athletes and marathoners are out engaging in workouts all the time. And he has made a culture of perfection, obsession, and like chasing the dream of athletics like in your life and like becoming a bigger than life personality and achieving something like legitimate when it comes to physical fitness is like ingrained in the lifestyle and is hard to avoid. If you are in their circle, if you are somehow tangentially attached to any of the personalities near them, you are are a part of like fitness represent culture. And that is a magnetic force. And so if you have a personality like that, or you are a creator led brand, like this is what you need to aspire to. We talked earlier about how Aloe is becoming a brand spread out into wellness. So worth noting here, Erwan collab with Represent. Represent has this Erwan collab. They obviously want to, whether it's just collaboration or not, Erwan's great brand association for them. And it also makes sense that they're opening a store in LA, but it's moving into beyond clothing. But then, then you have Cadence. So founded by the same founder with another influencer that they actually work with a lot, who also is an entrepreneur, is a extension of the Represent brand, not owned by it as far as I can tell, but they are basically saying, okay, cool. You are not just buying into the Represent lifestyle. The Represent lifestyle and the George Heaton lifestyle are adjacent. The 24 seven lifestyle is adjacent to that. And then now Cadence as a functional beverage is adjacent to this. It's an ecosystem of companies that are roughly tied together, share some ownership, don't quite share parent brands do in some cases and like this is the way like this is the modern way that brands look at is because once you build distribution and connections and influencers and resonance you can start to mesh together these collaborative projects they don't always have to be owned by you and and begin to build something that feels significantly bigger and they are the perfect execution of that model and having done it like over a decade and if you are the type of influencer or creator or feel you have the charisma and you know and you'll know if you don't um to build something like this, you need to be looking at it like that. How do I establish myself as a movement the way George is at the center? How do I surround myself with other personalities that are equally have their own different gravitational pulls the way it is with his brother, with these other athletes? And how do I layer companies and ideas on top of this into something that is more interesting and powerful and relevant to my consumer than these conglomerate brands of the past that do all these different things but don't really resonate with? And if you're looking to build a modern version of a Nike, they're doing it.
other ways to stand out in active wear. So 10,000 has gone the tactical route. And we're gonna talk about a lot of niches here and how you stand out in a niche. So great short used to be the one of the core shorts that, that uh, I wore for a long time, purely based on performance. I don't love the uh, big arrow thing that they have on the back, love the fit, etc. But they've leaned into tactical, which is an option that comes across for like almost any niche, right? You can lean into a couple of these different areas. And being tactical just means basically being military adjacent and being like that type of guy adjacent. Military, cops, firefighters, people that work in jobs where they feel akin to those folks or are just in those communities and you know there's a whole massive industry of tactical adjacent things and they were just like cool we we're going to take the same active wear aesthetic the same products that other people have we we're going to lean more into the workout culture etc that is like military and tactical adjacent great positioning that a brand can establish if it is authentic to them and there is room in almost any category to go tactical adjacent black rifle coffee being an example in a different niche i'd say that's also like a slightly political which you they ten thousand is not done at all which is smart of them to just stay middle ground then we have ASRV that I am wearing right now. I like ASRV a lot um, because of their obsession with design and iconography. And I appreciate it as a designer in a number of ways. And so I actually look at it like, for instance, I don't know, if I did not appreciate this brand as much as I do, it wouldn't be something that I think I would like hugely universally appeal to me. I've never been quite into the like futurist, like almost robotic cyber like iconography thing, but they execute it so well and the clothes feel so good and they compare by materials. Like I've been won over by the brand, but they have developed this iconography that you see across everything from the stuff you have listed here and the wings and the you know various symbols that they have and the little target stuff they have on different clothes. And they've obsessed about materials enough that they've just built this look and feel that so many people love, feel akin to, that is interesting. And then they've just over the top documented it with like amazing content. Their Instagram content's amazing. The way they shoot everything in this produced fashion is amazing. And they're just a brand that I feel is executed really well on every single thing that they have going. Pop into their lookbooks for a second. You can see the different ideas and stuff that they're putting out there. Motion themed lookbook, super cool. I'm a sucker for the like quasi alien landscape lookbook. Introducing AeroSilver, the next generation in our silver infused performance. And so they've also invested a ton of materials, lots of unique materials, which what ends up separating a number of brands to start off in activewear and start off on the factories like I'm about to show you and then build their own thing is investing in materials to make a difference for them. It might only be incrementally different than someone else's material, but that means you are honing in on performance for your customer. Interesting in our silver. And I love the effort and intensity they've put into making produced content, even on networks like TikTok, because they feel it represents their brand well, even if other content might perform better. Obviously in my content, I'm a big preacher of how much design matters. And this is a great example of a brand where design is the differentiator of this brand. They've taken iconography, color design, art direction, creative direction, and performance design and like industrial design more seriously than perhaps any other brand in the space, especially any that are near their sizes. And that's why they shine through. And that's the kind of thing that like, if you are a designer and you know you're a good designer and you have other good designers around you, like that is what you should aspire to build. And it is completely possible to find success that way. Then we have Kill Crew. I love Kill Crew concept so much because it, it uh, explains this counterculture concept so well. You can take basically any category that you're in that, that, is, that is popular or common, workout gear, whatever it is. And if you can put a counterculture or anti-establishment bend on it and find success if it's authentic. This brand is 2024 tap out. Everyone wears it. Their customer loves the message. It's the liquid death of active wear. I don't love that comparison just because like they're not doing crazy stunts or anything. It's authentic, whereas Liquid Death is like super out there. But just the idea of like you can take an aesthetic difference, apply it, and there's gonna be this huge chunk of people that go at like that message that resonates with me. Those words they resonate. That look it resonates. That's for me and just attached to it. So they own that in active wear. But if you're in other niches, it's worth thinking about like does anyone doing that bend? Um, I had a, a strategy session um, this weekend with a company that's in gardening, but it's gothic gardening, and that was an interesting to me. It was just like hey, like they're thinking about their strategy for their products for their content and really like a lot of it's just like taking all the mainstream stuff that is out there but it's like can it be black can we use rise against in the soundtrack and like sometimes positioning and uh, product development can actually be that easy if again it's authentic to what you're creating and if there's a consumer group that will resonate and just like there is a thousand percent that in gardening there was a hundred percent that in workout where people were not being represented to the extreme and intense nature that they wanted to be and then this brand smashed it let me have district vision uh brand i was wearing at the beginning of this video i wear constantly the spent a lot of uh, money on district vision and I think they stand out because of intention. So they're a combo company, sunglass company. I bought them originally for the sunglasses and have active wear, but they were really created their brand around mindful athletics. 
after a series of courses on being like a mindful athlete. They spent a lot of time developing their own technology. That's what got me into them with the sunglasses was they had these sunglasses that like truly had like anti-sweat, anti-fog. I don't know how they developed that. Um, I'm not the right consumer for like $300 running sunglasses because I lose and break them all the time. So I eventually lost and broke like two pairs of those and was like, this is going to be an expensive habit. But they have leaned into this idea that mindful athletes and people that have intention in what they are doing and creating like need a brand for them and have created excellent real products for it and then an excellent look feel and performance that goes around that and then done things like even their collaborations it was like a they them and new balance opened a you know center for mindful something i don't know, like they, they're beginning to think about it with this intention behind it and this idea that you can get a theme you can have something that appeals to a niche who are willing to take it into account and have execute your design to that level and you can create something interesting now i'm gonna get to my disappointment section so born primitive is basically like red pilled athletic wear but the one thing i really don't like about um what they've done and put together is like everything's made of polyester and we're just in that era where that can't be what you sell on your activewear you're already putting on like essentially a bunch of plastic for lack of a better term and polyester is the worst of that and the fact you're going to drape your body in and wear it around all the time like all of the brands that i mentioned prior i never looked at kill cruise materials uh, but everyone else has like doing actual blends and cares about what that looks like and have non-polyester options and these guys do not. Then we have Young LA and like Young LA is just Shein. They're just using the same manufacturers that do that kind of stuff. Uh, they're making all this all polyester stuff. They just have a aesthetic and are pressing it as hard as they can. And that's fine, but like that's what you're buying. And you can totally make a business that way, but like this is literally just Shein with US models. Then people like Legends and First Form. And the reason I don't like this is that in this era, you should not have to look at a brand and not know what it's made from. Like they're not listing materials and stuff on their site. To me that goes like, okay, you're hiding something or you don't know what you're doing marketing because like just spit some quick game in here every product page you have detail what is in the product the materials it is show the product especially if it's clothing both like on the ground and on a person so there's a reference point ideally multiple people something i love about kill crew stuff is uh they had some reels that are just like every body type so they have women of every body type in the shorts and telling you what size it is and a video that's that simple is the most useful conversion tool you probably have and then actually go through and like whether it's a beverage or supplement or whatever, like list the ingredients. Same thing with this. What is something made of? Give consumers the full reference. This model is 6'2 wearing a size M and that's the model. This model is 5'4 wearing a size XS. You know, like, and this is made of 20% elastane, 80% polyester because consumers care and I hate not being shown that. And legends and first form, like don't not showing any of that data rubs me the wrong way. Also when it rubs me the wrong way is the Fabletics. Like I just don't like the scammy, like A, the clothes aren't that great, but then B, like the scammy model of like, okay, well you can buy it if you have a membership you get x but once i get a membership i have to then call them to cancel it like i get what they're trying to do it's probably a more popular way but like this this is not it all right so now what happens if you want to get in the game this is from my newsletter this week uh i dropped down three factories for starting athletic wear these are all on pietra i like pietra for a couple reasons um get into it separately or i get the brief version now is one of these factories are vetted like i started working with these factories on pietra because i went to someone at pietra like an actual person was like what factory should i use for active wear and they're like here you go so you're not like just digging through alibaba etc you actually get some referrals be the other one 3pl like my valuable stuff is shipping from the pietra 3pl it's just when your stuff you order goes right and all everything's linked and shows up at the same place and it's all on a dashboard there's like something to be said for that being easy but anyway diving um deep into this I'm not here to give a Pietra spiel is BH Activewear. So these are great if you are just getting started and you want to do a small run of something pretty simple and put your brand on it at a low MOQ, like this is the stuff. So for instance, let's go look at two-piece set. If you like the overall style of this two-piece set and you scroll down and you look at the materials, so 78% nylon, 22% elastane, so not recommending you a bunch of polyester, $19 for a set for 30 units. If you're trying to validate a brand, pretty easy and straightforward to do and they have tons of these styles and they are non-polyester styles so you want to validate something go get 30 units and put your logo on it of a bunch of the things they have and see if it will resonate with your gym your audience wherever you're going to run on meta ads like this is the way to get there and this is definitely the easiest brand with which you can do that with from a quantity perspective etc now you want to scale up and build an actual brand arabella is a good option tons of these styles you're gonna to have to produce more moqs but you can go like fully custom on the look and feel so i want to go take these shorts i want to adjust the length i want to adjust some of the fabrics i want to put my own custom pockets in there these are the people to work with you for for that and they'll go help you develop whatever you need to and you can look at cost it's like great right so this is like 6.99 for five you're getting them off the shelf you know 6.75 for 200 and you're going custom again to four dollars at a thousand units like okay now we're for real and you need to work with factories like this to get to the kind of factories that you know voir all these other people use they all use factories that are in vietnam and these like big larger um 
a conglomerates of factories, but you can't just call them and start. They're not going to do your 200 quantity or even your thousand quantity. You're doing tens of thousands. You can actually even start the conversation with factories like that. And this is a place that will get you there. And the last recommendation is Crease Group, who I have met in person. They've actually made a bunch of the valuable stuff that I am doing and I love working with, but they're like a luxury group for this. So like they're the ones where I was actually, I was at Magic um, with them and uh, I like met them in person for the first time there and was going through all their activewear. They do some really interesting brands and they had the quality level and material level of like Avari. They were able to have all that custom stuff, be able to get it to you in relatively low quantities, like 200 units, 400 units. Um, and so basically they're bridging that gap between, hey, I wanna do this small, but I want that quality, like they're it. But they're not like, oh, I'm gonna go order 200 off here. Like you're gonna get a call, you're gonna make a plan, you're gonna work through all this, you're gonna pay the premium, but you're gonna get the stuff that is like incredible. And so if you want that option, then it is Crease Group. I feel free to DM me and if you have like a actual brand and I will happily connect you. So where does this all go from here? And what <laughs> we've looked at all these brands in the space, they're different niches and also giving you some factors. If you wanna compete in this space, think about what can I do? How do I build a world where I can go to tangential products the way Represent does or Aloe's done? What are some angles that have happened? What are some aesthetics that are there that, that don't really exist or then what's going to happen next and so i am thinking about what happens next my, my brand is an extension for me to basically put my ideas into reality and leverage the fact i have a large audience and a good understanding of how the internet works to be able to then you know move that and so one of the things i've been thinking about with products like um these beach pants which like aren't the final thing whatsoever this was like a first starter product but the idea of like okay we're living in athleisure right now everyone's has the same lululemon pants or Huawei pants like how what's the next aesthetic style for that what hasn't been represented and for me there is a like beach tie-in there and a function tie-in and i don't have it nailed on materials or anything like that here like these are these are cool they're super affordable um but they're not like where i think that vision is going but it's the beginning of this for me it's the beginning of me saying this is a concept let me see if it resonates like aesthetically with an initial product at a certain price point and then let me build something more interesting into it over time and bringing it full circle back to made like this is where i feel this is going like where i think that all these styles that we have are going to get way more interesting materials way more interesting looks and washes and there's going to be an ability to stand out by being the people that really lean into that but it's going to be a really thin window because this is something where aloe or lulu whoever will see it be like oh this is what's happening people are really getting into fabrics or reminds me of Bybore and he's like complicated. It's almost like a think of Bybore as like a Photoshop for textiles software that can allow you to print anything in any combinations. Like these bigger brands are going to go attack once they realize that like that could be a way to stand out. And so that's something, something to think about is like we are going to be wearing these much more interesting garments created in more interesting ways that are more reflective of knits or like these modern processes and incorporate this together. I think that is like the new athleisure or like the next gen athleisure that has that luxury bent because it gives you a reason why it's more expensive. Um, but I just don't think we're there yet. But anyway, that is my Brandscape breakdown playbook for approaching activewear and athleisure. Um, I do think that, again, since this is relatively commodified, your customers are buying this from somewhere. If they have resonance with you, they might just buy it from you. Can you build a huge brand that way? No. Can you establish a connection, begin your commerce journey, extend some things, try some things that way? 1,000%. And if you do have bigger or better ideas, hopefully some of these tools and ideas and things I walk through are helpful. Not sure which of these categories I'm going to do next, but I uh, definitely just want to hit this one. Let me know what you think. Other questions, things I should hit if I do this kind of video in the future, and really appreciate you watching.